Welcome back to Gfinity, champion of champions. My name is Lycan. and with me I have Richard Lewis and Thorin. Guys, I think uh, the map really speaks for itself. Uh, yeah. I mean, look, <laughs> no, no, no surprises there uh, in, what, in terms of what we saw. We knew this was Virtus Pro's map. We knew that Virtus Pro, uh, again, I would say the, the best team in the world on this map, I think. Uh, there's certainly maybe Navi that might have something to say about that. But this is a map they've embraced. When it first came out, another team's just vetoing it and dodging it. Virtus Pro were embracing it, and they were saying, look, we, we love this map. We loved it on 1.6. We've loved it in every iteration of Counter-Strike. We're going we're gonna to play it. So uh, it, it really tells. Now, Envious had some nice little moments, but they just never really got going uh, on, on that map. And you could see that, just especially on that um, CT side, it was, just a, it was just a lockout. Virtus Pro knew exactly uh, what they needed to do, even against great aimers. So this is where the series gets interesting for me now, that map, which I think was always going to give Virtus Pro the uh, a head start and advantages out of the way. Yeah, the first, this was a given that Virtus Pro would definitely take this map. A number of the other ones are going to be contentious, and it's very much going to be either form or who's got something new. Mm. This map, though, the only X factor was, okay, maybe... Envious knows eventually they're going to have to play this map because they always ban overpass. Maybe they've got something, and just the fact we haven't seen them means we haven't actually experienced it yet. Unfortunately, if they did have anything, they're playing the best team on this map. They got a some T rounds, but ultimately, VP was always going to win it. You saw the way they played. When they have that kind of CT defense, it's, it's just going to be very, very difficult because the number of T rounds you're going to have to get to have any chance. Because no, no one, it, other teams, yeah, other teams can do decent CT halves, but VP, it feels like they get to like 10, 11 rounds with such ease, though. Yeah. It's not, that's not even a great half for them. So I feel like this map was very strong from them. Now then, as they go into this next map, this is where it's true. This, this is actually statistically the worst map for VP. Yeah. So this has to be a win for Envious because if VP goes up now, and this is on theory their worst map, the best of fives all but out of reach at that point in time. So if you're envious, there's a map you've been playing really well on recently. It's been one of your strongest maps. It's a map you beat TSM on. This is the map where, okay, you forget about the first one. It's not a big deal. You knew that was the one that was going to go to VP. You win this one. And I think this is the one where it's going to be the T side of envious because that's what they've been really showing us off in their big performances. T side's been very impressive. And so yeah. let's, see, let's see what they can show us against Virtus Pro now. How yeah. important is it for them to start off on T side to set the momentum? Um, I think, obviously, if they get the option, uh, I think they'll definitely pick CT just because the inherent bias of the map. I think even though they've got a super strong T side, I don't think they're going to do anything crazy like start T. Uh, you want to set the foundation, and you're going to do that on the CT side of the map. But it, that, that's, that's the X factor about Envious. Their T side's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, they do it on Dust2, where they, we, we, obviously we're not going to see in this series. They do it on this map. You know, this is, you know, they can do it on cash. This is where they're, they're really good at sort of just having those sort of godlike T rounds. You know, you've got Kenny S with an orb. You've got Apex getting picks. And they just seem to coordinate their executes so sharply, so well. And, and this is why a lot of people think this is one of the most... Um, individually skilled lineups that's ever been assembled. But perhaps because of that, maybe that takes a little bit of uh, the shine off just how well coordinated they are, how well drilled they are. And when you consider this is still a relatively um, new lineup uh, when we're talking about the lifespan of some of the teams they're coming up against, you know, especially against like a Virtus Pro who've been together for so long now. It's, um, it, it's a real testament to how good they are. So I, I think if they get the option, I don't think they're going to do anything crazy. I think they'll st definitely uh, want to start this, uh, on the CT side. But here's the thing. It's not really a knife round that they have to win to set that bedrock, whereas I, I definitely think Virtus Pro are going to want to get that CT side uh, and then try and just do something with this because they don't have a great record on this map. No, this, I mean, this is one of the maps, though, you still do think of when you think of Virtus Plow, you think when they're mm. in really, really strong form. T side is where they can just overwhelm you here. They batter down that middle and they just take apart anyone, even crossfires. It's very hard to get a setup that works against them when they're in that kind of fine form. The problem is, this is the map where for Envious, I feel like they should be the most confident. This is a really, really strong, because like, okay, the two best Envious maps so far, in their short history with this lineup. It is Cobble, it is Inferno. Now, Cobble, great map for VP also, so we're not going to see that unless we get to map five. This is the one where, right now, all signs point to this should be where Envious can even it up now, and then we'll be going into the third map, 1-1. One, one. It'll very much be an open series at that point in time. There is a chance for VP, but this should be the map where that, that beautiful, incredible constellation of skill can really shine from Envious, because the problem with Train is, because it is so CT-sided now, I think really CT-sided maps like that, like Train, 
they, they very much come down to like team play aspects more so than like amazing tactics or really high skill level if you have the excellent team play like you play off this guy very well you know where he's going to be looking so you can look the other place with the right timing certain teams have it certain teams don't the problem with having so many aimers like envious have and new constellation of aimers is if that is going to be something that's going to be a factor for you it's probably not going to present immediately you're gonna to have to play maps out a few times. I mean, I, I told you that was the second time they've ever played that training competition. So yeah. this is a map they've played a lot. This is a map that I think it might even be the most played at the moment. So this is the one that we're really looking for. It has to be an envious win here, I think. All right. Uh, you've talked a lot about envious and how they have mm. the force buy. That's, uh, that's something that they're very oh, good yeah, with. Yeah. Uh, they do it a lot. Can you explain on this map in particular how the weapons that are available for a force buy uh, will play into the matchup? Well, I mean, this is particularly good for force buying in the sense that, first of all, we've already seen evidence of this on Inferno in that previous round. The Deagle's back and it's back with a bang. We saw Get Right pick uh, JW with an AWP with a Deagle from that sort of long range in mid. It's not the kind of shot that every player is going to be able to hit, but again, Envious has started to use these Deagles and bring them in a lot more. And in those kind of uh, areas where you've got these very closed off but long sort of parts of the map the deagle can have a, a big impact also as well there's lots of tight areas and choke points smgs here can be absolutely lethal so even on those forced buys especially on the ct side you can still have very good uh, you know lock up rounds you can still hold banana for example and that's a feature of just how envious play this map anyway they like to push down and sort of take aggressive control of banana where they can uh, that they, they'll they'll get right in your face and not make it easy for you to sort of spread out around the map as T and maybe look to work those picks. SMGs, so even on the on the rounds, if they do lose any, they can they can still make good use of them. So their force buying style, I think, it is suited on a map like this, perhaps more than others. But um, still, I, I just think overall, Envious are, are going to win this map regardless. It's not even that the map itself, uh, or rather I should say, it's not even like the, the economy or how the game works or anything itself. It's just the map and the fact that Virtus Pro don't have a great record on it. They don't play it a great deal. And this is one of Envious' strongest maps. In fact, if you were to ask Happy what one of, what one of their strongest maps is, he'd say, he'd say Inferno, in, in, even when maybe statistics and performances don't bear that out. I think what makes them so dangerous when they're on the force buy is that they're one of the best teams I've ever seen uh, it's not just, okay, the conventional wisdom says when you're on force buys and you have like whatever it is, a tech nine, a CZ, all you do is just, people say, right, you just rush them, you coordinate it. People try that. That's how you end up on a frag highlight where a guy just, <laughs> yeah, two of them are just spraying you down when you run into the B site. What they do is they will actually walk just like they do on their, their main T executes. They'll walk in these two-man teams, but it's once they like isolate a guy. Once they get a guy on the corner and the first guy tags him with a bullet, then that two-man team will swarm and then a guy will come in behind to get the trade kill. And so very quickly, okay, they can afford to actually trade kills there because they'll be picking up the guns as they do. And so then it'll be getting, so okay, you think, right, well, it's still fine. We're still in like a, a 4v3 or a 3v3, but actually they've got the rifles now. And so now, okay, they don't have armor, but they have incredibly skilled aimers. So that kind of levels the playing field out there. So I don't think it's actually the pure four spies as in like doing a save but a really expensive saves that you have to worry about with them it's that because they have so much skill they're one of the best at making like a half buy work like they have yeah. one ak a galil a deagle a couple of flashes and the reason they're so good with that is because they're so incredibly skilled in theory they're going to use the guys with the ak's to get picks and there's more guns for your team so they are very, very difficult to play against in terms of you can't really economically manage against them. Like they can b force by themselves out of a game, but that's them doing that. You can't really put them in the position where there's nothing they can buy and nothing they can do. And there's not many teams you can say that for at the moment in CS. All right. Well, thank you guys. We're getting ready to go into game number two of Team Envious versus Virtus Pro. We're sending it over to our casters, Henry G and Toby Wan. Take it away, guys. Thank you very much. Yes, we are back here for map number two. We move to Inferno. Oh, yes. A comfort zone for myself, as well as a comfort zone for Envious, as the boys were saying on the panel. Yeah. Do we really expect Envious to have an easy time here, though? Definitely not an easy time. Uh, the guys talked about this being statistically VP's worst map, but I still love their approach to it. I think, although their results haven't been great uh, as of late, I think their, their, their CT game can be absolutely fantastic and be one that Envious could find very hard to actually dissect properly. Like The way VP play this map so well is they're so good at utilizing the, um, the, the smoke grenades and the incendiaries. Once they get some decent momentum and a decent bankroll going, they're so good at reading the game and working out what the T's are doing, and they can lock out T's for so long. They're so good at uh, cutting the map up with their own smoke grenades and forcing the T's into unfavorable situations when they're going in with very little time here. So 
I think the the, the ninth round, or as always on Inferno, going to be so pivotal because this is one of the few maps now which is actually, I want to say, almost broken because of how CT sided it can be. But mm -hmm. like we've seen it just recently how 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 much that can affect results going into this. So ninth round will be important, but you can see some teams go absolutely ham on the T side if they do get that kind of momentum going. And Envious definitely can be one of those teams. The, the individual skill they have across the board is just off the charts. I think yep. it's such an impressive lineup they've assembled, and. The, the way they approach the map is just staying in a little tight fragging unit, four men to stay together, one stays holding the flank, is normally happy, and those guys just uh, work the map and work their, their skill. Yep. And we've seen them absolutely wreck some teams on this map, so this is definitely a map that favors Envious, I would say, ultimately. If we're looking at, we want to make it black and white, but ninth round always going to be important. It looks like uh, BP will actually be winning this one, and like I said, we would only assume they would be taking the CT side. Kia's going to make them work for it, though. Oh, not again. We've, done, we've, <laughs> yeah. done, we've seen how this works out. Yeah, yes. It's happening again. This time, BP don't want to play the same game as him. But you're right. I know um, uh, Richard was also touching on the point, too. Like, it's not just the talent of Envious. It's the fact, like, too, when you've got these forced buys, yep. you're going to have, like, the very tight corners they can they can utilize on CT. We, we saw so it. while they might be risky, there's a lot of payoff that can come from it. We saw how scary they can be with the Tech Nines on training. Even though they lost 60 and 8, the, the couple of rounds they did win were force buys of those tech nine so definitely going to see a lot of that this game no don't don't get me wrong that is going to happen and there we go so vp will be starting on the ct side we did obviously assume that one you wouldn't think anything else in inferno but yep. this is the start the dream start for them being one nil up in this series going into inferno ct start this could be if they take this one this could be a very quick one we could see a three nil coming in but yep. let me see envious definitely never count them out on this one this is one of the greatest maps for them in terms of the ak movement they can possess and uh pistol round it seems to be very fast, something very hard coming in quite early on. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm looking forward to it as uh, Envious and VP. To see him on Inferno, too, such tight corners. Yeah. To watch where the money moves, like you talk about, like the pistol round. Can VP get that economic advantage? Can you start to build up on these mollies as well, well as the smokes? This is one of the hardest maps to uh, control that CT economy. It's one of the times where you find yourself, if you do lose the pistol and you go 3-0 down, you go into that first gun round. If you have force port at any stage of the game, you don't have the full set of incendiaries. You don't have the smoke grenades. You may not have kits. And if you lose that round, it's when it kind of spirals out of control. You never really stabilize it on an Inferno. It's a very difficult map if it does start going wrong for you. So you definitely want to get that early advantage of the CTs. But mm -hmm. um, VP, I think they know what they're doing. We have seen some questionable buys from them this evening. <laughs> like the on train, they did sort of make some difficult decisions for themselves, but obviously 16-8 scoreline speaks for itself. They did recover and get themselves back into it. Uh, they did. It's it's just them going to play to their style. Like why it may not be perfectly logical, maybe it's more emotional that the team has got to do it. Yeah. Just just to stay up there, man. Well, this is what I'm talking about. So VP, as long as they play their game on CT. I want to see them utilizing that, that kind of dissecting the map with the, the smoke grenades, using the yep. incendiaries. If they get rolling like that, and I haven't seen Envious actually approach VP on this map before, so it's going to be interesting to see how one goes down. But here we go. We do go into the pistol round. It will be the second map, D Inferno. Envious starting on the T side here. And uh, five sets of armor for them, as we do have the lovely announcer coming over me there as well, just joining in. <laughs> and this should be something uh, you'd assume quite fast and uh, staying together. Here's that. We've got a little Zeus on Kiyoshima as well. <laughs> for the extra money as well as the shame. So you're right, it's going to be happy on their flank, moving up through Banana. And the rest of Envious will be focusing on controlling up inside of Carpet's apartments. Interesting enough, though, VP have only got one player yeah. towards Bs. They've taken the gamble. This could work out for them. Yeah, they're really stacked over here on Asa Bialy. Got the crossfire between him as well as uh, Snacks, who's playing from the graveyard. But already, MBK gets through. Both Bialy and Snacks will drop. Park's got a lot of work cut out for him now. Has to back it up, but he can't back it up in time. Kyo will find that frag. And now it's up to two players from VP. So even though they stacked the site, Envious have managed to not only gain control, they get the plant down, and they've got VP down to one. Yeah. There, there it is, the real simple round coming in there. Happy, getting a little bit of attention there, but maybe this one isn't over just yet. Taz picked oh, up two oh. headshots of the P2000. Oh. And unfortunately, there gets shut down. That could have been interesting towards the end there, but as I was saying, Happy going towards Banana, already trying to work out whether the CTs are pushing. Normally, you'll see some CTs go aggressive on Banana, so the idea here is that he can either give the call, the very early call off the CTs are pushing down, and they have their number advantage, mm -hmm. or if he gets nothing at all, he can try to just cause a little distraction there. Four players coming out of the apartments. I wanted Bayali to do better there. He had, to, he had a teammate there getting all the attention yeah it's just the silent usp at that range when you're trying to spam it there it can be very difficult unless you hit the first shot to actually capitalize on that situation but there we go envious do take the pistol around on the t side and vp will be forced buying straight back into this at the fourth there's the p250s head armor on two players as well and five seven on Bialy. and this time snacks is playing the, the close in on the smoke 
Waiting for, for just one player from MVS to come forward with the Zeus. And MVS will be coming through their blind. Uh, they won't see anything going on, but Happy's managed to already get up to Archers. He will have a little bit of a contest. Neo is going to find him, but can he actually win this up against the Mac 10? He cannot. So Happy already able to find one in Snacks. And he backs up a little bit. It's back on, on top of the site. Doesn't have any help at all. He's completely alone because the rest of VP moved over to A. But he goes for the Zeus kill. Can't claim it, however. But Happy does die, so they lose their flank. There we go, then. Four and three situation. The CTs probably just want to save their guns at this stage, right? So once you buy the armor and you make this investment, if you don't predict the stack correctly, the bomb goes down. It's literally like a 90% chance, maybe even more, you're going to lose this round. So just save the mm -hmm. armor, save the upgraded pistols. They've got a Mac 10 on Pasha as well. So try and use that for next round. This one didn't work out too well for them. And, but that's just a like, decent play and nice uh, discipline from MVS there. Getting that banana control, going through the smoke with the flashbangs, forcing the CTs back. And we saw uh, it was Snacks with the Zeus in the back. Couldn't really do a lot there. And they managed to get the bomb down. It's another clean round from MVS. The, yeah. good, the good thing about utilizing the SMGs in this map as well, because you can, you can control the pace of it, essentially. You can cut off, like I said, with the smoke grenades. You can make it very close range by going into areas like banana decent flashbangs and smokes are the key choke points means you can just swarm the bomb site with those close range smgs and uh isolate players like that and that's exactly what they did but vp do save some armor and some decent pistols here and that mac 10 of course yeah so let's see how this one goes down then it's going to be apex with the rifle there yeah he's he's the he's the main man to watch as far as at least the initial long frags but vp can just keep playing this close game They've only got one smoke, one flash, one nade. So, uh, sorry, actually, they've got two smokes with one also over on Biali. But they're not playing aggressive on Banana this time around. But Happy, he's already managed to get past the front lines, up not into apartments just yet. But the problem is Biali has to smoke it out. This is just Happy doing classic Happy things now. Trying to kick the CTs over towards that area, and he's doing that. Three players step, step towards that site. Two players go towards B. They're going to have two CTs waiting for them, but this has kind of worked out perfectly for them so far. Happy will probably show a little bit more presence now. And VS hasn't pushed up all the way, and now with that pop flash from Snacks, he might find himself a little bit of space, finds the Zeus kill, and actually grabs the MAC-10 into his hand, looking for the second, able to find it, and they need a little bit more help. Apex is able to get himself in and at least bring down Neo, but this is this is a two-on-two -two round until Snacks comes through and changes it up. So it's a 2 on one Happy, that one man playing the distraction game over in apartments is now held out of the B site. He cannot get to the bomb and may have to just concede. Well, there we go again. That Zeus coming into the current meta actually manages to land that first shot and gets Snacks those three kills. And that massive spree is going to be happy now. Left on a two-on-one situation. CTs know where he is. And then Snacks picks up the fourth rack there. And that's a huge rebuy into the game as a VP take the third round there. So two to one. But the T economy shouldn't be too rattled here. As I'd, like I said before, they've been getting those SMGs and keeping the pistols. They've been keeping their bankroll pretty high here. So this would be another difficult round for the CTs. Mm -hmm. But this is where things definitely get interesting now. Because Pash is going to keep keeping that MAC-10. Yep. And I wouldn't be surprised if we saw something a little bit uh, change. Okay, so we've got three players going towards B from the CTs. This is good for them. They know they're probably up against the AKs here. So they're going to be trying to show some presence there. At the start of the map, at least push them back and show that they have control of that area. Yeah, but it's nicely read by Kia. Throws out the Molotov, throws out the nade. So Envious, uh, they don't allow VP to get control of archers so holding banana they have to do it from the top end with the rifles and already vp they're starting to drag a couple more players back over to the air they're heavy on the arch side no one's playing anywhere near the apartments and this is the one time that we don't see uh that early push coming into the apartments from envious there we go then nothing going down just yet they've actually left one player it's going to be neo towards that b site yeah they come a lot of contention now they're coming up neo's going to smoke it but at the same time he gets caught with the smoke in his hand so mbk will take the top and they're moving so quickly and vp they dragged everyone off they were ready for the a push but it never came Ooh. and now because mbk's moved up so far he's got to find both pasha and probably looking for that extra ct spawn rotator but vp they're hiding it up they're looking for exit kills, or at least Envious going for the Wanda. They're going to find one, and maybe able to find that second Taz being shot from the Archer side. He does have a little bit of help coming in from the library. They catch out too. I suppose it's better than uh, Envious just running all over your entire team. You lock him up at CT. There we go. Classic Envious play there. Textbook from them. Just making sure they show some presence towards across the board on the map there and trying to bait out some of the CT utility. Happy stays there towards middle. And then it's a very simple execution from there. Just going in with their key players here. MBK can be so frightening on this map. Goes straight up, finds two huge frags and gets them into that B-bomb site. And then what can VP even do? They had no choice there. First two players going down without a single frag exchanged. And they have to save their two rifles. They only managed to save two. They could have had three, but mm -hmm. Taz did get taken down. And that's a very clean round for Envious now. And it's 
puts them in a fantastic position in terms of the economy because the CTs, although they did save two, they forced into this one. This is going to put them in a very difficult situation indeed as they may have looking down the barrel of a double eco. Yeah, and VP again, they're, they're trying to find this early advantage, pushing three players towards that banana. And they are, they're not coming down. They cannot reach the archers again. So they have to be held back. But Envious Patience. They just leave the bomb down, but they have taken over the apartment's area. Haven't got all, all the way out to the balcony. Yes, they don't have a view from the apartment. And Snacks, he does come down a little bit further, but Envious aren't giving giving VP an inch as, as the CT site. Normally, like VP, they try and push out. They try and find the early kill. Information fall back, but they're not finding the opening. Well, look who's got all the information right now. Envious actually just taking that whole middle area now. The CTs don't have any intel as to what may be going on. They have to fall back to crossfires on the bomb site, and it's, it's been a very difficult situation. It just gives so much freedom for the terrorist side as they make their way onto the A site now. Oh, there's the double flash as Bialy completely blind. Had to jump back deeper into the, into the balcony. He's going to find one spraying into the site. Can't find a second, however. Marshall was the man with his crossfire coming to help out into a three-on-three -three situation. The CTs, they've returned, pushing in through Archer's library as well as another one down through main. Pasha, he's still looking for that easy pick and he's able to find one. Happy showing himself in the back of the, of the back of the truck. And Snack's gonna flash himself in, realizing the last two are on the bomb side, jumping up, able to find Apex, but no, he can't finish the kill. Neo can't do the work either. They hold the round here, Envious at 4-1 protecting the retake of VP. Yeah, that's, that, that's the problem when you don't have these full buyers going into these rounds. Once they lost the mid control there, it, Envious took advantage of that completely. They realized they had mid control, executed perfectly onto the bomb side with the smoke grenades there, found their initial frags. It did come back in when Pasha found that frag onto behind the truck there into pit, but yep. it wasn't enough now. And this is the nightmare situation I referenced before. And now they're probably going to be on a double EK. They're not really able to buy anything. And Apex picks up that first frag, utilizing that uh, yes. entry fragging roll. Snacks pushed down to bench now, but mm -hmm. happy just waiting as they make their way to the the B bomb site once again. Yeah, they didn't actually see Snacks run down. There wasn't there wasn't vision at the time. So they're checking every other corner apart from bench. But at the same time as Envious already managed to get the kill over on B, they're just poking up slowly to see if they can get the plant there. And Snacks is waiting for him to come up to A and he's never gonna have that chance. The smoke covers the cross and VP trying to hightail it back as quick as they possibly can onto that B site. But I kind of feel like Envious is playing them again. Uh, you smoke up towards the B, you, you force the rotations. They're, they're basically trying to bait out rotations from the CT. They're seeing if anyone will come down mid and take the bait here. The Kiyoshima going to be making his way in. Has got some backup as well. And you can see Taz, just for the Zeus. Trying to get that <laughs> cheeky frag there. As we said, they're Snacks taking a Desert Eagle shot. The Zeus does not actually work out for him. It's a four on two now. Biali and Snacks, they have got the MAC-10 in hand though. Biali just going to be trying to work that smoke and see if he can make any magic happen through it. Yeah, but Snacks is so far away. He's saving the MAC-10. It's just Biali. He's the only man there. And MBK will drop him down. So Snacks, is she pushing over coming in towards CT side? He has managed to get one frag so far. Picked up the MAC-10, but it's not really going to help them out that much, to be honest. Yeah. But as I say that, though, that's the, the round where Snacks actually managed to get that 4K. Zeus as well. Picks up the MAC-10 and got a little uh, spray down going into that one. So maybe he does fancy his chances of that gun next round. But the money should be still quite bad for VP now. They're actually getting a little bit of a dangerous situation. Five rounds in favor of Envious now. And they're only losing one man in that round as well. So you can see the money. Although it's okay for CTs, they can actually get yeah, in a decent buy here. But it's, it's going to be a relatively good one. No kits once again, though. That's a problem. If the bomb goes down, which it pretty much has almost every round now, yep. they're not going to have a chance to even get these clutches down. So they need to, I'd say, go for something a bit more aggressive. Go for the first pick in their favor, just while they haven't got this advantage in terms of the economy, and try and uh, force issue that way. Let's see what goes down now. The, the, prob the problem is Kiyoshima. Like, yeah. Kiyoshima's been doing such a great job on Banana that VP can't come down, and when they do push towards the archers, it's very, very late. Nice flash this time around, and this opens up the hold now. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Try and get that, that first frag on the board. If I say to Kenny S as well, and they need to Ooh. find that frag, which they do. Snacks picks up two, and that's an amazing way to get themselves back into this game, as they should be able to guarantee themselves that round now. They can fall a player back from the banana area and just isolate that now. But MBK keeping the dream alive for MBS. He picked up a frag onto Bialy, and Taz neutralizes him. Yeah, but ends up just being tip for tat right now, and happy. Ali catches out VP, getting a little too aggressive, jumping through the smoke at the bottom of Banana, and Apex has opened up the A side. It was such a great start for VP, but they've lost control, and they're about to lose. Well, actually, Happy goes down to a one-on-one. -on -one. He cannot win the last oh. little battle, though. It will go the way of Apex, and Envious. They keep the round 6-1 after what was a great start by VP.
I don't know how you lose those rounds. That's insane. If you get the first two picks and you don't even lose a frag in that situation, leave one player towards B, yep. and let's come back and play that passive setup then. Make the T's come to the bomb side. VP were too hot on it then. They're facing the key choke points, allowing MBK to find frags. They just needed to be making sure they actually just forced the bomb to go down. They actually didn't allow that to happen. And now look at them. Six to one, and they're on an over here at the P250. And this That's could be quick. one of the fastest rounds ever. I don't even have a chance to finish my sentence there as that one goes down. Five man. Death there towards middle, and but yep. this is where they could probably get the AWP out, and I'd like to see it happen to be honest. Now they need a change of pace here. Seven to one. Envy is definitely running away from this. This is the T side of Inferno they're doing. I see. There we go. Yep. AWP coming out on snacks. He's, he can be the secondary orb on this map. That's what the kind of uh, struct restructure of this team has gone towards. You don't normally mm -hmm. see Pasha pick up the orb. Snacks kind of has a go on uh, Inferno. He can be very good at this car position as well. But Kenny S answers back with one himself. Yeah, and on winners. exactly the same position. But Snacks, he can't stand there. Kio is doing the same thing he did before. It's the Molotov the flashes, the grenades, they're pushing them off top banana. So the orb has to move all the way back. Snacks does at least get the pick off on MBK. And it's given MV a second thoughts about pushing into this B site. Well, they get the first frag here, but Snacks has taken a lot of damage as well. T's got control of the banana, they push the CTs back to the bomb side, but the CTs haven't quite reacted to it yet. You can see Kenny S now just going back to try and work a pick. There is a player towards Junkyard there, and Taz is going to be lying in wait. This could be a difficult angle for him to hold as well. And there we go, because Apex just rips his head off. I'm mm -hmm. not a fan of that. Checking the corner every time, losing Pasha as well on the archers. And Bialy is now the last man standing over on A. He needs to actually have his friends rotate over. The question is, can they do anything as they come over? Bialy's going to go for that little flash, give him a little bit of space to move, but he can't. He can't actually find the opening, and now they've lost control of A. Neo's coming in at least, he's able to pick, get the pick up on Kenny S, but you're going to put the AWP in danger. Snacks has no life whatsoever, and it looks like he's not even going to come for this. Yeah, there's, yeah. No bo there's no point. It's the same thing again, they get the first pick, and for some reason they're playing, like facing middle is fine, don't get me wrong, that's absolutely viable and it's, it's something you should be doing, but Taz shouldn't be that angle by himself, you need the crossfire setup. One player needs to be getting the attention, and the other player needs to be holding the off angle, just so that can't happen. Apex shouldn't be able to walk up middle and find such an easy kill in that situation and get them back into the round. That's crazy that that's going down, and you should just be either going fully passive, getting the crossfires in the bomb sign, forcing the bomb to go down, or at least ensuing a crossfire there. And now it's an accident. I was going to say, look, he's going to die, but manages to take that <laughs> shot onto Happy, but it's going to be in vain here. But saving the AWP could be very viable in this situation. This could be fantastic for them, because like I said, Snacks actually is very strong on this map with the AWP. He's great at finding frags here, but mm -hmm. did I see him drop the AWP? They're actually going to be forced by into this one. And at this stage, they need to probably force by every single round they can, just because it's getting a little bit uh, shaky for them. Snacks is going to be utilizing his spawn hit and actually uh. busted a little bit there on the corner. Yeah, he, he locked up with a pillar, which means he doesn't get the perfect there movement, but still, Gets the kill on Kyo, a little bit more delay, goes to the pop flash, gonna oh, find, what? oh, what? It goes straight through his body, same with the second shot. They back it up even further, but he's blind, moving into the cheap spot. Elder now find the second over on MVK, supports there from Pasha. And they've at least got Envious down to only two players, and Taz now dropping it down to only one. Happy, that last little floater man for Envious, he's the last man left alive. Wow, that hitboxes were fixed. Well, yeah, no, I, th <laughs> I thought that was dead on him. Maybe like we'll see a replay after this game and see what actually happened there. But that's certainly like it was dead on him. But happy now, left in this three on one, and considering the economic situation for them, you'd, you'd assume they're probably going to go for this and see what he can do just to kind of take some money away from the CTs. You know, low it is, and that's a really questionable play by Neo there, jumping through his own smoke blind. Um, not sure what he's hoping to achieve, but down he goes. Makes it down to a two on one now. Happy does have 56 HP and one flashbang. Bomb down towards top of middle. You can see the CT's just playing on that smoke. Bialy trying to do whatever he can to stop that bomb going back in favor of Happy. Yep. And Happy still wants it. With 30 seconds left on the clock, time is most definitely against him as well as the crossfire here of VP. But a lot of patience from Happy. Banging out the corner, still got a lot of bullets to work with, but running out of time, 20 seconds, finds one near the pillars, but Bialy will shut him down. And they should be able to regain, yep, they'll regather that AWP from Taz. Well, this is what I'm talking about, the money's still not great, and Neo throwing his frag away like that, like, that's so important, because that's another 5k down the Swanee, and you have to think, like, okay, what are we doing now? We have to go force by, you're probably on a pistol next round, so this is the difficult situation for them, and they can find themselves in a very fragile economic state. As you say that, though, MBK getting the, the sawn off shotgun out. A yeah. gun we've seen come into meta recently. It's been a normally flash roll JW rocking that. But let's mm -hmm. see what MBK can do. He's going straight towards the apartments. This could get interesting. Yeah, gives it a shot, takes it out straight away. And VP, because they're not aggressively moving into the apartments, have been playing down low most of the time. 
This allows him to just have the balcony area, but Bialy, he's gonna get some vision. Starts spraying up, but flashed up, so he don't, can't see any more. We'll see one jump down to the pit, but can he able to bring down Bialy? Tan is still waiting on the site. Got Pasha again in support, but they cannot hold the, the, the site. Apex just cleaning up everything with Happy. And now again, Snacks is the last man left alive with this orb. Reveals his position by killing off Happy. But they're down to three men. The bomb plant is going down right now. And Envious are already on the hunt. They want to have VP's economic situation get even worse. And Snacks legging it down there. Apex gets the kill before the bomb plant gets down. But still, Envious, like, v they know they've crippled VP. Look at these entry frags. You've got Apex now on 18 frags. They're just having fun right now. They're not even really doing, I would say, strategies. They're just getting control of that middle to start. And they're just rushing the bomb site with very simple execution there. Yep. And they're playing so confidently. Once Envious get into this sort of mindset that they know they're actually hitting their shots and they're feeling comfortable, that's when they become, uh, like, in that sort of fashion, getting onto the bomb site and just being so formidable. And this entry frag working Ooh. out so well for them. But Snacks opens up on Zakia Shin with a Desert Eagle, one dig. <laughs> and now then, it's a five on four, but it looks like MBK going to be flashing his teammate into apartments there. Molotov in as well. A little bit slower this time. Taz with the Zeus there. A little bit ambitious to say the least, I think. Yeah, that's, that's an optimistic, uh, op optimistic Zeus. But it does put us now on a four on four with that early kill over on Kyo. Mm. And this does relieve a little bit of the pressure from VP. At the same time, like they don't know where exactly Envious are coming. MBK is making the play like they are making this, this, pu this push for A. But Virtus Pro have kind of called Envious out in their own bluff. They've got three players stacked over here on B. The smokes just keep coming. And now Snacks gets some vision. Realizing over at the wagon, can he actually find out he's blind? So look at this, eh? the T's are just going to work out. No players are towards the A bomb side whatsoever. That frags is going to be trivial at this stage because they've got complete control of the A bomb side. It's just a little yep. bonus for Apex as he stays there. He fancies more. That's going to be his 20th frag on the board now. He is playing out of his mind with these entry frags. Just going to be Pasha left with the CZ now. And of course, Apex finishes him off and pits Envious into double figures now. This is the Envious we expected to see in the first map. Now they've kind of warmed up and they've arrived on the server and this is look at the, the team we saw at DreamHack London last week. Man, at this rate, Apex got 30 bomb before we even hit the, the end of the first half. Yeah, you're right. It has been so good for him with these entry kills and like Keo's also keeping the distraction over on Banana, so it's, it's, it's the perfect T side for Envious. They've managed to find every hole in VP and VP have also made a couple of these holes themselves. Oh yeah, absolutely. And now, once again, Onto this eco situation. We've got PT 50s, 5 7, and USP and snacks. Taz, once again. <laughs> this one's try, better. Trying his luck. He's got a better angle here, at least. But Happy's just aware of this. <laughs> like, you know, he's just waiting. Look how close that is. Patience. He can see the foot. He can see the foot and just start spraying through the wall. The downside of Taz. Careful about your shooting your own teammate, Pasha. Now looking for his aggressive movement towards bench, but no one was up in the top mid. Envious hadn't pushed up at that point, so there was no joy for the man. And VP are just looking for anything they can get. And, uh, well, Not if much. they're going to get it, they've got to move towards the B side. But at the same time, look at that rotation's already coming out. Like, Happy's just having his game here with Pasha, but the B side completely open. Snacks coming back in again. He's got his Zeus out with a flash. He's at least having to get the kill on MVK. But it won't stop the plan from going down. And, in fact, it looks like Happy will be the man to finish up the round, killing off Nier. I'm not sure how I feel about the Zeus, you know. $100 to allow that to happen. It's kind of uh, <laughs> frustrating sometimes, but definitely an interesting uh, asset to the game. Snacks, he found a new toy. I agree. <laughs> he has been getting a couple of kills with this game, but there we go. That's another round on the board for Envious, and at this point, I think they may have tied this one up. 11 rounds on the T side. It's going to be a, a huge mountain for VP to climb. Definitely need the last two rounds. If they don't get 11-4, I would say their chances of winning this might be absolute zero, but here we go then. Snacks with the AWP. Going to be assisted as well with one of the players going to be near helping him out. A very defensive position though. Like just sitting in behind those sandbags. But at this stage, they, they, they keep getting the first frag and losing that position now. I think they're trying to play a little bit more of a passive game, force the T's to come to them. Just get that early bit of intel. You see, that's an interesting position for Snacks. So there we go. Now what's he going to do? He's stuck in this position. They know where he is. Making this utility T ammo to the position now. There goes the Molotov. And he should die here. Don't know how he survives, but there it is. That was the pop flash. Envious caught out blind, but he'll still end up dropping. Pasha needs to go big, but cannot do so. So it's into a two-on-two -two situation, but the bomb uh -oh. plant's already going down and being happy. He's in the perfect position, waiting on the stairs. Lines him up with a great control. Taz and Bialy just fall to pieces, and we're into the last round of the first half. Envious, so commanding for a map we're talking about is so CT-sided. They're 12 two-on-tees. So, 23 frags for Apex, 17 for Happy, and that tag team combination is working out so well for them. It's like alley-oop every single round. Apex goes and gets some entry frags in some bomb site. Happy lurks in another position, waits 
to rotate, and it seemed to be working so perfectly for them. Don't really need to do too much here. Another force by coming in as a last round. Does come to fruition. Snacks with the Max 7 now. Another shot gone on Neo, and uh, this should be another round. That will be a very simple procedure now for Envious. Yep, they want to slow this up. They know VP are going to be forcing up. They're going to have these close quarters weapons. And with the two orbs that they've got, use your money, force them out. The Molotov's already forced Snacks into one position. The secondary smoke is going to fly in. Snacks doesn't really have an opening. And they're basically down to a couple of flashes and one Molotov over on VP. So their defensive utility items just are not there anymore. And in fact, Snacks coming down. Nice flash, but he's going to lose his own life. And Neo waiting is with the Nova. Oh. Maybe he can not. Oh, he can't. He shoots Neo in the back and doesn't find the kill. I don't know how he didn't get that kill there. MVK One life. Insane, One life. Insane reactions to come back and hit that shot. But there we go. Four on three situation now. Passion with the Max 7 himself. I would have thought he would have got that one. But MVK is unbelievably sharp right now as he gets another kill. Four on one. And that's going to tie at the half. 13 to two in favor of MVS on the T side of Inferno. That is unprecedented. Wow. What an amazing half for them. That is that is absolutely crazy. And if you're worried that maybe Envious were a little bit downhearted after what happened over on train, what's happened right now on Inferno is instantly going to repair that. It may even cripple VP coming into the next map. This, like, we were saying, like, yeah, Envious, this should be their map. This is where they'll feel most comfortable. Yeah, we thought it might but win. this comfortable? Yeah. <laughs> on, on the T side, that's crazy. Like, VP just looked completely locked out there. Didn't really have any opportunities. But now we go into the T side pistol. Obviously, one VP need to win. In. They've got five sets of armor going up middle. You assume they're just going to try and go very fast, stay together, go frag with frag. But here we go. Apex holding the off angle here, seeing what it can do. And actually, the T's going to be falling back and making their way back towards the B bomb site. We're happy. It's going to be waiting as well behind the sandbags. Man, there's so many balls going out right now, mainly because of the decoys that were spammed up mid. Akio, happy's waiting right there. He's out to bring down Pasha. So already VP in a terrible position for this T side. Down to only three players. And he's still running around with that Zeus, hoping for something maybe in the apartments but they're, they're playing really tight now on Banana. So VP made that run back over towards A, but Happy hasn't left. Takes out <laughs> one with a headshot. Looking for the second right now. He's already made to claim two on this, on, on this uh, round anyway. We'll finish with a three for an Envious. The perfect start to their CTs. That synergy between Happy and MBK, though, that's such perfect play there. Brody Counter-Strike fans at home wanted to learn how to play the game. Watch how those guys play that bombsite. That's absolutely perfect. Happy there, you'd assume he'd fall back to the bombsite once they got the first two frags there, but he knows he can rely on his teammate there. He gets the first kill. He hides. MBK flashes him in, and he gets the next two after that as well. It's absolutely perfect. VP are having to force into this round. So they've got Desert Eagles, CZs, and P250s. And uh, the CTs will be getting an array of weapons here. They've got Novas, P90s, MP7s, M4s, you name it, they've purchased it. So you can see themselves here just trying to spam through this mode and work out. They can get some early damage going on here. Mm -hmm. But the Ts don't really have much in terms of actual utility. They're going to have to just do one flashbang and make their way into the bomb bombsite, it seems like. It's when Envious can manipulate everything they've got. Like, yeah, you don't, like, you've got a couple of flashes and smokes left, but even the P90 bullets they can spray. But Taz, a huge entry frag coming into the B side. They need to clean up the back defender, and they're able to do so. There goes MBK, and this B side now belongs to Virtus Pro. They're trying to retake it, but Neo, with this stolen P90, has pushed all the way up. Apex having trouble getting there, because getting sprayed from range by Snacks, who will be able to bring down but Neo still doing the work. Bialy's there as well. They're both locked into the same corner. And Keo yep. with this Nova. All he wants is a shoulder. Can't hit the initial hit. And Virtus Pro will take the round against Envious. Well, there we go. Then they somehow find that round. That Desert Eagle headshot coming in. And somehow they take over the B-bomb site with no grenades whatsoever. It's just going to be that one singular flashbang that somehow gives them that round. Envious potentially being a little bit... Uh, audacious there with their play they didn't yeah, they didn't really employ any teamwork there there's a lot of one-on-one mm -hmm. situations but here we go did they force by back into this one to see they actually will do that so yep. envious want to end this one as quickly as possible they definitely don't need to this situation you probably could just say we could just wait till the gun round start and let's close this one out properly but they, it's not, that's not the envious <laughs> it's not the envious way no that's that's not that's not their mark their, their motto i'll go with there we go then so VP once again getting that banana control, obviously very important here, but look at Apex. He's got all the way into T spawn here, and this could be so deadly. If one of his teammates now is just to cause a little bit of uh, attention towards middle, this would be crazy. Well, they're trying. He gets information on one. Can't see the other two, which are pushing up towards Arch side right now. <gasps> and now they turn around, they see him at the last moment. So he will be able to get, up, get the kill on Neo. And VP. Able to take control of top banana, but while they do this, they know they've already hold they've already got the A arch side. Both library and in fact now they know they also brought down the A defender. This is a very simple A plan. Happy 
needs to catch VP by surprise somehow. There's the flash. He can't see anything. Taz will ring him down. And this will be a round for VP. They do not lose against Envy's buyout. Absolutely. They do get two frags. And I feel like Apex could have done more work with that. Had he gone a bit faster, perhaps. But unfortunately for him, a T turned around just at the wrong time. Managed to get one frag with a 5-7 there. But not as exciting as we would have hoped there in that situation. But two frags. Envious, not going to be enough here in that force buy. You see Kenny S now saving the P90. Actually managed to get another kill onto Snacks there as well. Brings it down to a two on one. Obviously, the bomb is already down, so this will just be exit kills at this stage of the game. But any kills he can get will be important. He can, hear, he can hear running down low. He's actually going to find the kill on Bialy as well. There's only Tans left. The bomb's going to explode, but they're right next to each other. Interesting to know as well. So you see Kenny S being the main AWPer for anyone maybe new to watching Counter Strike. He doesn't buy armor on this round like the rest of his team do. Just to give him enough bank there, you can see he's got the most money in his team. Um, so he has the option to buy the AWP going into that first gun round. But yeah. um, let's see how this one pans out. We can see that buy did come into last. So you'd assume now Kenny has actually bought buys armor here. He actually fancies this round. So he wants to utilize that P90 he picked up. This has to be an aggressive arch play if he's doing this, but they don't have any flashes or smoke. So it's four, four men towards the D-bomb site. He's okay. be happy once again. Stacking and just trying to work out if he can get some intel here. He, he's the man that's asked to do the impossible. Basically, if he can cause some sort of distraction and maybe sell, then maybe a, stake, uh, a, a stack towards uh, the A-bomb site, who knows what could happen. Looks like a little B-split perhaps coming in here now. They have got B-control and they have taken the top of middle as well. So maybe this stack will work out for them. Pasha just leading the charge here, trying to work out. Find out what's he he saw MBK. MBK. Yeah. Just a glimpse of the shoulder pushing out. But at the same time, VP, like, okay, they actually are going to commit towards the B site. They feel like they've brought down the defender, which means that like, you've got to assume there's at least going to be two A, uh, two A defenders for Envious. They're checking. In towards Dark, they realize there's going to be one there. Kenny S on this close position. He's already been chipped down a little bit, down to 71. But Pasha checking both the sides. Very, very cautious. Checking every single corner. Now going to find one over at the barrels. And uh, he's got help from Snacks, was expecting Kenny S to be there, and that's going to be a big wipe for him. But then again, we are a 2-1-2. Two -two. The rotation's coming over, Apex still on the side, Envy is actually holding this one for now. But it's only for now. That bomb ticking, Happy moving up. Actually, sorry, the bomb about to tick. Happy going to get there in time, sees the head. Can't tap it there of Taz. Now he finally gets a little bit of dink damage, but doesn't have anything more than this P250. Looking into the back corner, and uh, Taz will end up taking out wow. the round. So, obviously, one VP had to win. It comes right down to the wire there. One on one situation. That stack actually working out for Envious there. So, VP do get themselves in a decent position now, but now Envious will be buying, but mm -hmm. not a single kit for them, and not great utility. They haven't got a single incendiary grenade. This can be so vital on a map like Inferno. It's great for lock the smokes, lock out the initial push, and kind of. Uh, hold the CTs, uh, the terrorists off, and then the incendiaries of where the execution comes in, you're able to do some serious damage at and uh, separate the T's from entering certain positions. But here we go, in round number 20, once again, BP do take that banana control. Envy's playing very passively here. They're not going to be showing too much presence there at the start. The work out for them as well. They actually don't have too much utility, as I mentioned before, so they want to try and save that as long as possible. Yeah, let VP waste their stuff, trying to clean out those initial, those initial corners and then start throwing at your smokes and slowing down the VP push. Which currently is still like indecisive. They're looking for the initial kill to open up that defensive Envious, but I'm able to find that opening just yet. Envious is trying to keep three players this time over on A and not very far up. It's a very, very, very safe hold from Envious. Well, they just want to utilize those crossfires properly. This is the problem BP had. It was a lot of one on X situation. Instead of going passively and making sure you work as a unit, they're actually getting taken down a lot by players. Just being a little bit but confident, perhaps. But happy. Just playing very up close to this smoke with a drop on himself there. I'm not sure if Pasha just saw him. I assume he didn't. And it looks like Happy will be pushing through with the flashbang here as well. This could be the very key frag to this round. He still doesn't walk through, though, oh, and Pasha's backed it. up. Propping the Molotov position, gonna flame out the boxes on the other side. And then Nade right in front. That is gonna dink down Happy a little bit, down to 68 now. Spraying through the corners, and yeah, Happy. Oh, he's not visible just yet. Now he will be. Pasha crouching for the shot. And needs to clean up this side so the rest of Virtus Pro can get themselves in because they've cleaned up everything else. And it's just up to Keo now. He's coming back through CT. Checking just on the on the corner. They're both Snacks and Keo looking at each other. 
This is the point. He's just going to save his weapon here. We saw the CT by not great. That was like a record before. No kits whatsoever. But that was just great discipline play from VP. Making sure they check every single option there. But we may have another twist here as Gio picks up a kill onto Bash. That's a great headshot from him at the bottom of Banana there. As I was saying before, VP being so methodical with the way they were like taking part of the map, making sure they cleared every single area, got control of middle, got control of Banana, and then they worked out where uh, Happy may be playing from, took him down, and then there was no frags from the CTs whatsoever. No contention. So he's managed to get himself a pretty clean round there. They do lose three frags, and uh, Bialy is going to be low HP as well. He's stay alive though. But that should put the CTs now. Onto another eco here. We knew Kishima has saved the weapon here. But at this point, I'd say they take the full eco and just try and get the AWPs out, get a full buy and just close this one out before it gets a little bit too scary. I don't know if they fully agree with you. <laughs> no? Well, they get, well they, this is like, they, as long as they keep themselves around the 2300 mark, they'll be mm. fine for the next round. So that's fine. I don't mind this too much. They haven't got the armor. It's just going to be Apex that gets us some body armor. He's once again going very slow, not going to be forcing the issue. This is that four man stack coming in once again. It's almost a mirror of what we saw the last couple of rounds. But Happy going to be on Desert Eagle this time. We know what kind of devastating work he can bring to the table as we saw at Dreamhack London. We'll be able to recreate that kind of magic here as a pop flash comes in. The T's do push in and Keo picks up the first frag, but Pasha takes down two and picks it down to a 4 or 3 situation. Man, what a perfect time for Pasha to be there. And he's going to Molotov out Kenny S, and Kenny S actually gets away from Pasha, and Keith MPK comes in from the side. I'll just get that perfect headshot with the CZ. And it looked like a perfect control of Banana pushing towards B, but Envious had a lot of men over there. And again, now actually Envious pushing down in a very similar way to what VP did in their, in their CT half. But this ends exactly the same way. Right, so Taz and Snacks making their way into the B-bomb side. We can see Happy there just for the Desert Eagles. So the stack working out relatively well for them. They get three frags, but it's not going to be enough to win the round here. And this, the bomb does go down, and this is a round. You would assume Happy just wants to save that AK, I would say at least, just so they can have that really strong bite I mentioned before. But this is a kill here. Ah, there we go. He's going to be making his way out. He's just checking the corner to see if he could work out whether there was an over ambitious terrorist waiting for him. But not going to happen. He will save that AK-47. But perhaps looking for some more exit kill opportunities here as he makes his way back to Arch. And he's moved all the way around him. This will probably be a place where maybe VP will be less cautious as they come out, considering where they saw him previously. But no, Snacks keeps the guard up and finds Happy. So then, so this is where the team money, uh, CT money, sorry, gets pretty decent. This is the round I've been waiting for. Though. There's that orb. Yeah, that's all they needed. So like Kenny S now, he, he's great on this map of being very mobile. He hasn't had, he's been pretty quiet this game, to be honest. You can see uh, Kiyoshima and Kenny S on uh, 13 and 7. But uh, let's see how this goes. Kenny S got that decent mid spawn. Probably will be going for the facer as well. The smoke comes down and won't be able to get too much from that. And you just get that bloom just before there's a chance to take a shot there. And you know. fast Neo is making his play up. He's only there with the AK, cops a little bit of grenade damage himself. Thought for a moment he's going to rush into Kenny S. But the moment passed, and Envious. Now they've got to deal with Pasha again. Had a really great time here on the T side, moving up through Banana. Always finding at least an opening or a collateral kill. But the push is coming from VP, and they're coming to A. They may actually decide to run over towards B because they've got control of this arch side. They don't really know it yet. As Kenny S trying to find oh. some vision, but he's realizing the smoke's already up and happy. He's the man back at CT and actually turns his back at the wrong time. Taz, we call him the man of the timing and he just found it there unhappy. Now it's up to MBK, gets a lot of information, but Keo dropping at the same time and Neo just goes straight through the smoke. This B side belongs to Virtus Pro and Envious have no, uh, no intention of coming over to stop them. Oh, definitely saving the situation. You've got the AWP and the M4 and Apex there. Um, that B split coming in from BP actually perfectly executed, getting control of middle and B once again, and uh, just pincering that bomb side perfectly. So Happy didn't know where to look. Kenny S coming around, facing towards the top of middle there, and he actually got to drop his AWP as well. That's actually really devastating for them. But he came around and just missed out on that information. Though so Cappy, isolated, stuck between the rock and a hard place, had to decide what to do and uh, made the wrong decision, had his back towards the terrorists. And that's another perfect round for VP. Looking very strong in this T half, though. But after such a devastating first half, you have to say this may be a little bit too far gone for them, maybe delaying the inevitable. But definitely very convincing so far. Mm -hmm. It definitely has been. But is it enough? Like we've seen amazing comebacks already today. Six in a row as well. Yep. Not bad. This is this Absolutely. is looking really good for VP. As long as they can keep Envious down, but like does Envious keep themselves down? They've got just shy of 4K. There's 5K over on Keo. And they are going to have a, themselves a timeout to decide what they're going to do. 
Take a take a full eco right now. <laughs> I know do, that's what you do, want to do say. That. You, you you hate it when there's uh, a force. It's just because uh, I just just finish it off properly instead of doing the, the quasi buys and forcing into it every single time. Just give yourself that full buy. Really healthy. Go for something a little bit like go for Kenny S towards banana. Something a little bit different. Mix it up. Go for that first frag, and then you can do what VP did, which they actually didn't hold on to. You get that first frag, and you fall back to the bomb site, and that's when you should be winning the round. That's how CT should be locking this one out. Mm -hmm. When you keep force buying into it, and you don't have the incendiaries to actually handle the actual final execution. That's when you start losing. You actually have to face unfavorable situations just to find a frag before the T's get onto the bomb site. But let's see what they do here. It looks like they actually will be doing something with this. I can see a CZ being purchased for uh, Kenny S there. And what will the other guys be doing? Apex has got the M4 in hand. What's that music? I believe there is a marching band. Perfect. That's just what we need now. Just to kind of raise the spirits of us. It, it was funny. I thought we'd actually have the entire place to ourselves because everyone else is shut down for the night. But uh, CS never sleeps. Let's bring a marching band to a land, why not? That's what we need. That's, that's, what, that's, that's, that's the next progression, isn't it? Yeah. Like you've got such great brand, brands behind so many teams. Now they've actually got to have like cheerleaders, <laughs> marching bands. That's true, it's a logical the conclusion, right? That's yeah. where we end up, become a real sport. We need all that kind of entertainment. Exactly. The on. Yeah, that's good exactly. Idea, I would like to see a VP marching band. <laughs> Well, maybe we can bring them in here and see what they can do for us. Go on the main stage, perhaps. Yep. <laughs> but there we go. It's going to be a pause. This definitely will be a tactical pause here for MVS. Yep. We had a few technical uh, issues when we were starting out, but this is going to be a time for MVS just to kind of slow down the momentum. A lot of teams will do this. Like The kings of this are fanatic. Whenever they're in a difficult situation, they'll take a pause and always come back and just slow that momentum down at VP. And it kind of just cools everything down and takes them out of this hot streak they may be in right now. So this is a great call from MVS. A lot of teams forget to do this, believe it or not. Even at yeah. this level, they won't do it. They'll kind of, oh, yeah, we probably should have paused in that situation where you lost six rounds in a row. Uh -huh. This is the perfect time to do it. Work out what you're going to do with your money. Get a game plan on the actual gun rounds there. And that is really loud, isn't it? <laughs> I, I actually have it turned down, so I, I'm perfectly Oh, you can't right. hear it? Okay, I can hear no, it. No, I'm really actually good. Noise. Okay, fine. But at the same time, I destroyed my hearing at a very young age, so. Yeah? Yeah. Too many video games? Um, yeah, I'll say video games. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Just... Just don't get, just don't go near big ass uh, speakers that actually make your clothes vibrate. Okay, um, that's good advice. Though, yes, it is. Words of wisdom passed on the years. So after the first half, there we really did count BP out of this, this, yeah, this game, we this did. map especially, right? So they seemed like they didn't turn up whatsoever. Their CT side was actually getting the first frag wasn't the issue. It was mm -hmm. actually handling that four-man uh, push that Envious presented to them was every single round, getting onto the bomb side, very simple executions, nothing too technical coming in, just relying on that powerhouse of Apex. He's currently on 30 frags here, and his first half, though, is absolutely stellar. Getting in there, finding frags everywhere, and Happy clearing up on the rotations as well. This textbook uh, Envious things there. Yep. But now then the unpause comes in. They have been a little bit lackluster. It's currently 6-1 in the second half. This is kind of interesting. It's, uh, it's, it's going to be... Fun to see how Inferno develops as the M4A1S has been nerfed or mm -hmm. changed, I should say. I wouldn't say it's a full-on nerf, but it's a change and players are still adapting to using it. It was such a huge deal on Inferno, obviously spraying through the smokes and then pushing down towards uh, T-steps and stuff, yep. being able to pretty fast certain angles, not really an option anymore. So that's going to be interesting to see how this actually develops as a map going forward. But now then, CZs, Desert Eagles, and 1M4 for Apex, which is saved, so... They will hold their money. This is definitely a wise investment, oh, a wise decision, I should say, yep. going into this round. Just make sure you stabilize your economy, get a good buy-in, and just close this one out before you let them get to double digits. And at that point, you think, okay, it's getting a bit silly now, but here we go then. Well, let's see if, if VP can hold on to the momentum they've been running with here on the T side as well, and keeping Envious away from map point and leveling this series at 1-1, which is what the analysts thought was going to happen. And we've seen a lot of things change up in this map too, where they all they all thought CT side would be the strongest. Yep. Go, so the CT is holding back now. No full man split, uh, stack coming in this time. They'll be playing more standard setups here, and the uh, yeah, yeah. is getting in there, working together, making sure they don't give anything away there. As I say that, those Kenny S get a little <laughs> shot for the smoke. What can you do against that? <laughs> Not a lot, man. Not a lot. But, well, I suppose you can get a little bit of revenge. It's not on Kenny S. It's going to be on Keo instead. And this is where VP have switched it up. So they've left these two envious players over on the A side. And they want to come into B. MBK has himself one big helping factor, though. And that's the smoke. It's covering the top. And now MBK does VP. Okay, well, that'll work, too. Just fire straight through the smoke, <laughs> killing off MBK. And then Envious are scrambling to get into defense positions in time. Pasha in the perfect position, but Kenny S will actually get the kill on him as well. I don't know how he's doing this, but great kills from him so far. Kenny S takes down two of the VP players. Happy just having a little spam for the smoke here. Unable to land any shots there. And this should be... 
a foregone conclusion now as Kenny S gets out of that. I don't think he even has any bullets left in his CZ to actually finish the job off. A happy just wants one kill before going down. And if he can find an AK, that'd be great for them going into the next one. But I don't see that happening. Kaz should be able to find the kill here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the safe option and just fall back here. He's taking the AKs with him as well. I like this. <laughs> Making sure he doesn't take any chances here. Keep it as far away as possible. Yeah. Doesn't know how low Happy may be. Happy's actually pretty close to picking up that AK because he pushed it towards him, but he's still waiting and watching. I like the Happy Steagle now. It's called Team Solo Rex. It's like he's actually renamed his Deagle after last week's antics in Dream Act Lab. That's pretty funny. I didn't notice that before, but... Well done to him. It's going to go down in history. One of the biggest plays of all time, so why not? But here we go then. So, Envious do get a full buy finally. They get the incendiaries out. They're not going to have the AWP this time. They're going to be going in straight up for their five rifle buy. And I think this is good. They need to play a standard round here. Don't have to force the issue too much, I don't think. Um, just work the rifles, work the crossfires. And let's see how this one goes down. BP once again getting that B control. And there's not one to actually go down there and actually get down there in their faces. A lot of teams will want to do that. It seems like they actually play a lot more passively and allow VP to have an in information at least and that control at the start of the round. But VP still doesn't have an opening into the side. Then again with Pasha. He's up so far again. Like his play on Banana has been absolutely stupendous, but Envy is having Molotovs and nades and flashes. Well, this is it. Now that this time it's harder. They just need to wait now for the T to do that execution. This time, the difference is they have those incendiaries to separate the T and do damage. So let's see how this works out. And Snacks really just trying to poke through holes without having to move up, cleaning out the bedroom and apartments. But Envious are fine with this. Like, we're down to 50 seconds. VP still haven't made the play. They haven't even decided whether they're taking the bomb yet. It's still sitting back at the stairs near T spawn. They're going to come up and try and attack into mid. Snacks gets that entry kill over on Keo, and they do really clean up now. VP, they've managed to clean up the entire A site. There's no players left from MVS over there. It's just MBK as well as Happy. And they're bringing the bomb now towards the A site. Pasha still playing this floating role. It'll bring down MBK. And Happy, well, he can sit right now over in the laundry, but where's he meant to go from here? This is looking a little bit of a problem for Envious now. They're not actually getting any frags above from that one. This is going to be anything. And that one. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, right, this is going to be a perfect round. You, you, you hit the caster curse, man. Yeah, 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 there it is. Perfect. But there we go. Happy gets get taken down. Mm -hmm. Envious are actually, the, the synergy we spoke about in the first half doesn't seem to be working out for them this time. Like, they're not actually getting the frags off each other. Well, as soon as the CT goes down, you expect the frag to be coming in and that exchange to happen. But yep. VP going into these situations perfectly. Maybe this is the time now for Envious to actually get that banana control get pushed down, but now we can see Kenny S mixing it up. They're going for another force by a MBK on the CZ. Kenny S going for the AWP pick. He got locked out with a smoke last time and going to be made redundant once again. They have to mm -hmm. change up and work out what he's going to do to this next round. And this is such a heavy investment from Envious. They really just want to end this. Yeah. Like there's, they've been so close for so long, but they just can't end it. Now the Molotov's going to clean up sandbags. VP out of again maintain control of top banana, which is also what Envious was. Uh, that's what they were capable of doing in, in the first in the first half. It's more of the same here. Two one two set up for VP, just trying to work out whether they can just get those easy frags again. It's going up into certain checkpoints together. It seems to be working out for them very well. Mm -hmm. no, like I said, no frags actually being returned by Envious so far. Happy is going to leave his teammate on the bomb side there. Here comes that three man push again, up through the mid. They leave the bomb behind. But they just try and find the, the initial kill, and then the banana, f the banana players can just rotate in and bring the bomb with them. They smoke up over an Archer side, they Molotov, Molotov up to a cheap corner. There's still smokes and nades coming over towards the B side, which is why the, the rotation started happening. But with Kenny, it's getting that initial kill. Maybe he's got time for the rest of his team. The Molotov has actually just caught VP out, and he picks up a second kill, over, this time over on Bialy. Third one into Tash before Pasha finally puts him down. Yeah, that was a masterclass from Kenny S. They take down the bomb as well, so they know it's going to be towards the area. Look up. <laughs> Not going to work out for him, so that could have been the chance for him to get back in that round. But that's just, they needed someone to step up in this CT half. There's been so many rounds in a row they've actually dropped now. Kenny S finds some form with the AWP, finds three frags, takes the bomb down, and finally gets them to map point here. So not, this is where the pressure's been released now, at least. They know they're going to overtime. They can kind of uh, breathe easy now. It's going to be five rounds required in a row for VP. Can't afford to drop anything now. And it has to be said that T-Side has been very strong so far, but off okay, Kenny S's movement. You want to see aggressive. He goes with a pick straight from window. Can't connect the shot, however. Backs up straight away. This has really slowed down VP, though. They were looking to push aggressively up second mid, and that's just ground to a halt. 
the shotgun in hand there as well. So he's going to be trying to make that work. Shotgun can definitely become a lot more prevalent recently in current meta. So definitely don't count him out of this round to see how it goes down. Five AKs for the Terra side. Once again, getting that top of the out of control. And that's so good because it means the CTs don't have information at that point. And when you do go back to middle, they can't really justify their rotations too easily. They don't know where you're going to be going towards. But Kenny S now, much more passive setup this time. He's going to be playing towards the library. And they're happy assist his team in a bit smoke towards the top of the line. Bomb still down towards T steps. As, uh, Neo leads a charge towards middle, just trying to work out where there's any CTs waiting for them. Snags. Did you see him up? I don't know. I don't think he caught a glimpse. It's very hard to see that one. Running, running on the rails of. Oh, okay, yeah, now Apex is down inside that graveyard area. And it looks like VP have just had enough of this. They're going to commit properly over towards the B side. So in come the Molotovs. It's perfect positioning. Ashley pushing MBK out. And he has to move back to the back of the site near Quad. And Happy. Oh, okay, that was a big kill for Pasha. Now they've actually opened up the CT approach. The nade's in behind. And he's so <laughs> low. Horrible. He's been burnt out. He's been naded up. Now goes for the plant. And they do actually have the openings. Keo, the last man left alive for the CTs. And VP... You never count these guys out. They are the comeback kings. And right now they are four rounds away from forcing out an overtime up against Envious here on map two. That's actually a really big round for them to win, right? Because now that win streak has actually disappeared from... Well, that loss bonus, I should say, has disappeared from Envious. They're actually going to make that for $1,400. They haven't saved any rifles there. So there's going to be a difficult situation now. It won't be a double eco, but I would say they probably definitely want to take one eco here at least. They can probably justify a few PT-50s, maybe a CZ. But mm -hmm. don't. They, this is the point now where I was... Kind of joking before about the force fires. This is the stage you don't want to be doing. This is where you can yep. potentially throw the game. So take some discipline here. Take the eco on the chin, and then, then we can work out what goes on from there. Like I said, they have got the overtime in the bag, so it's not a huge deal, I guess. But yeah. they want to make sure it doesn't get to that situation after such a strong first half. Well, you kind of got your wish. It is just a couple of upgraded pistols and only one bit of armor over on Apex. But Virtus Pro, they're armed to the teeth. Molotovs, flashes, nades, everything they want, as well as the, the, fi the five set of AKs. And they're going to use these bullets to their advantage, try and clean any, everyone out. If you know Envious is going to be on this eco, got to clean out the bedroom, going to clean up these, these nice tight corners where you could use the CZ or potentially Zeus. We saw last round as well how clinical VP has been about flushing these CTs out of position. You saw MBK having a hell of a time just getting Molotov out of the, the barrels there and then moved back to new box and He's getting at least down. <laughs> it's just like it was horrible. And then just, uh, VP reading it so well there. But now once again, doing that very slow play, like I said, flushing them out again. But Kia opens it up. Desert Eagle headshot onto Snacks. That's going to help. And now what's that going to force the terrorist side to do? Going to make their way around to the arch side. Kenny S waiting with the CZ now. A great <laughs> angle here as well. Could work out for him. He got some quick kills on that side previously. It's a lot closer though. And this time Neo using the corner of the wall just to bang through and kill off Kenny S. Oh. And Keo, there's the two for now with that Deagle. Needs to find a lot more and he can't actually have vision. Actually gets the tank through the smoke. He's done a lot of work from down here inside the pit. Finds another one. Can he get the hit? No, he cannot. Pasha will finally put an end to his free with that deagle. Happy tried to make a play up through mid, but that won't work either. That's a one on two. It's still a great eco here for Envious. It's not going to completely cripple VP's economy, but at least it's going to make him work hard for the round. So VP fighting back now. The round's getting a little bit scary, obviously, at that point, but they cling on. Kiyoshima making things a bit more interesting with the double Desert Eagle headshot there, but. Not going to amount to the victory just yet. As we go into round number 28 now, we can see this buy coming in from Envious. They have one Famous on Happy. And uh, they do have a couple of incendiaries, but only one kit. So BP, I think they need to keep doing more of the same. They're doing so well. I just taking the map, dissecting it piece by piece, getting control of Banana, going up to middle, flushing the CTs out. And that's working so well for them. Envious really hard, having a hard time actually countering this. So. And they, and they keep getting entry fragged as well. Like VP, they come up, and it's not just this simple tag and back out, uh, which is really, for me, surprising, because like, Pasha has done such a great job it's again. I know I keep flagging this, but... Pasha just gets... He's got so much confidence in that area now. Most yeah. teams will take about 25 seconds before they can even get to the top. They're just running straight up now. They know they've got so much control of this. They've rattled the CT side, and now the smoke's coming in from the CTs. That's quite an early smoke to go down, so they can just wait for that to come down. They know they're probably in a very... Good situation there. Show some presence towards the A bomb site. Pull back towards B. You know you've based that quite a lot of utility already. And this should be more the same for BP now. They're going to smoke the CD spawn. They got the rotation. Yeah. They actually got the rotation. There's still three players from Envious over on this A side. As VP come in, but MVK doing some serious work from the back. Already claiming out three. Bialy is so low. A breeze will kill him off. And MVK, he will pick up a fourth. Uh, and maybe single-handedly finally puts an end to Inferno. Snaximus is the last man left alive.
And are they going to actually give NBK the five? No, they won't. Kenny S will take the last one. Okay. But finally, Envious are able to wrap up Inferno on their CT half after what was a blinder of a T side. So after the pistol, the only two rounds that uh, Envious actually won there is when Kenny S gets a three or four man, I can't remember which was, and then MBK getting a 4K. I think they got a little bit lucky there. They got so many rounds in the first half. Had they gone CT there, it looked like they weren't really turning up on the server as well. So mm -hmm. good win for them. Can't take anything away from that. But that second half, a little bit disappointing after such a successful first half campaign. Yeah, that it was. And that's one of those things where VP, like you never want to underestimate them. There's going to be those times where maybe, maybe you play a little bit more defensive just because sure. VP can do things like this to you and it just happened to you as well so it's going to be fresh in your mind. This is the thing as well, like VP towards the end of that game as, as, as well, they're just getting up to the top of Banana. It wasn't even the case of, okay, we need to expend some grenades here to get to the top. They knew they had just rattled the CT so completely. We're just working this map so well. Get to the top of Banana, throw some smokes in, dissect middle, get up there, and then see what you can do. Molotovs were so prevalent on the T side as well. They're actually making sure they were flushing all the CTs out. It was really great to watch. Unfortunately, the first half for Envious was even better. Yep. They didn't. They weren't doing as. I will, I will just, what's the right adjective? I'm going to go with beautiful CS. They were like uh -huh. VP were doing some really nice like textbook CS stuff. Envious were just relying basically on their actual raw talent and aim there. They're staying in that four-man uh, formation. We see so much from them, and that was actually really impressive to watch from them. Apex almost 30 kills in the first half. Happy collecting all the rotations as well. But yeah, that's the map Envious we expected them to take, and they do it in style. Yeah, that they do. Of course, uh, the style will continue soon. We're going to go to a short break, and then we'll come back with the analysts as we look forward to map three. Welcome back to the Gfinity channel.